In this video, I'm going to show you how to record your Mac screen with a voiceover and computer sound using macOS's screenshot application and a free audio plugin called I Show You Audio Capture. If you're running macOS Mojave or Catalina, you're probably familiar with the built-in screen recording application called Screenshot. If not, I have a tutorial that shows you how to use Screenshot to record your Mac screen with a voiceover. I'll leave a link to that tutorial in the description. But sometimes you want to record the sounds coming from the computer along with your screen. Maybe you're showing a video or demoing an audio application and need the viewer to hear what's going on. Now, unfortunately, you can't do that with Mac OS out of the box. You can't record the sounds coming from your Mac in screenshot, at least not at the time of this recording. So I'm going to show you a way to get around that limitation using a free plugin called I Show You Audio Capture. Let's jump in. So here we are on my Mac. I'm running Mac OS Catalina 10.15.4 for your reference. And the first thing you need to do is download and install the I Show You Audio Capture plugin. So I'm just going to bring over my browser window here. And you can see I'm already on the plugin site. I'm going to leave a link to this download and support page in the description below the video. So Shiny White Box is the company that developed the I Show You Audio Capture plugin, which is used in their lineup of Mac media creation software. Now you'll also notice over here in the sidebar that Shiny White Box also develops and supports Soundflower, which is the predecessor to I Show You Audio Capture in terms of plugins for recording Mac audio. So on this support page, we have this big green button here to download I Show You Audio Capture, the installer for Mac OS Mojave or Catalina, which is what I want since I'm running Mac OS Catalina. Now there's also detailed step-by-step -step instructions for installing I Show You Audio Capture on this page. So if you have any problems, please refer to these instructions. There's also a link over in the sidebar here for troubleshooting I Show You Audio Capture if you run into problems. I should also mention that if you're using an older version of I Show You Audio Capture for an older Mac OS, you'll need to uninstall that older version before installing the newer version of I Show You Audio Capture. So if you're in that situation, you can find out how to uninstall I Show You Audio Capture by selecting this link right here. I'm going to leave you to download and install I Show You Audio Capture on your Mac and catch up with you when you're done. All right, I'm back. Now that I Show You Audio Capture is installed, I'm going to show you how to set it up to record computer sound along with a voiceover using a microphone. Now, if you just want to record computer sounds only using I Show You Audio Capture, I'll show you how to do that too later. All right, to set everything up, you first need to open an application on your Mac called Audio MIDI Setup. And a quick way to do that is to press the command key and then the space bar, which brings up Spotlight Search. And then you can start typing in audio and you can see Audio MIDI Setup is the top hit. So I'll just hit return to select it. And the Audio MIDI Setup interface opens up. Now you can see here on the left, these are all the different audio devices attached to my Mac. And most importantly, you can see down here, I Show You Audio Capture is present, which means I installed it correctly. All right, to record my computer sound along with my microphone while recording my screen in Screenshot, I need to create an aggregate device here in the Audio MIDI setup. The aggregate device will combine the computer sound and the microphone sound into one sound source. I'll then select that sound source, that aggregate device, as my microphone in Screenshot. This will make way more sense later on when I start recording. So to create the aggregate device that I need, I just go down to the bottom of the interface and select this plus sign. And from the drop down menu, I'll select Create Aggregate Device. And the aggregate device appears as one of my sound devices here in the left column. And here on the right are all the different sources that I can combine into my aggregate device. So I want to do a voiceover 
using my microphone and capture the computer sound. So I'm gonna select my microphone, which is the Rode NT-USB Mini, as well as I show you audio capture to capture or record the computer sound. Now, the order in which you select these is very important. So the first thing you wanna select is your microphone. So in my case, it's the Rode NT-USB Mini, and you select it by checking the box to the left here. I'm gonna put the brakes on for a moment here because I wanna quickly talk about microphones for recording your voiceover in screenshot. USB mics work just fine, but if you plan on using an XLR microphone connected to a USB audio interface to record your voiceover and screenshot, you're going to run into an issue. When you play back your recording, you're going to hear your voiceover out of the left speaker only. Now, I have a video that shows you how to fix that problem after the fact using a free application called Handbrake. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Now, if you want to use an XLR microphone for recording and don't want to deal with that left speaker only issue, I highly suggest you connect your XLR mic to a mixer that allows you to switch your mic's output to mono or allows you to mix the left and right channel output together like this Yamaha AG03 USB mixer. I'll leave a link to that mixer in the description below just in case you're interested. All right, back to the tutorial. Then I want to come down here and select I show you audio capture as my second source, which is the computer sound. So I'll check that box as well. So now my microphone and the computer sound, which is the I show you audio capture are combined together into this aggregate device. So the next thing I need to do is look at these settings up here. Let's look at clock source. Now I find I get the best results if I select my microphone as the clock source, which is the Rode NT-USB Mini, so I'll leave that selected. And you'll also see that the sample rate of the aggregate device is 48 kilohertz. Now 48 kilohertz is the standard audio sample rate for digital video. Now it's important that all of my audio devices use the same sample rate. If they're using different sample rates, my audio will end up sounding, well, for lack of a better term, crackly. It won't sound good. So I'm gonna make sure that all of my audio devices are using 48 kilohertz as a sample rate. So I'll just go over to the left column here and I'll select I show you audio capture. And I can see on the output, it's using 48 kilohertz. So I'll leave that selected. And on the input, it's also using 48 kilohertz. So I'll leave that. I'm also going to check my microphone, the Rode NT-USB Mini. And I can see that it only has 48 kilohertz or 48,000 hertz. So I'll just leave that. Can't really change it, so that's the way it is. The bottom line is that everything should be using the same sample rate. So if one of the audio devices you're using can only go up to 44.1 kilohertz, let's say, which is CD quality sound, then every other device you're using needs to be set to 44.1 kilohertz if possible. Making sure the sample rates are all the same is just one of those little gotchas you need to be aware of. All right, my aggregate device is all set up, but I'm not done yet. You see, the aggregate device is just capturing the computer sound and the sound from my microphone. For screenshot to actually record those sounds with my screen recording, I need to output them. I have need to output those sounds. To do that, I'll create what's called a multi-output device. So you can think of an aggregate device as a microphone capturing sound and the multi-output device as a speaker connected to that microphone playing out the sound being captured. The audio coming out of this speaker or multi-output device is what Screenshot actually records. All right, to create my multi-output device, I just go back down to the bottom of the interface and click on the little plus sign again. And from the drop-down menu this time, I'll select Create Multi-Output Device. And the multi-output device appears in my device list. And like the aggregate device, I have settings here on the right or different sources that I can combine into my multi-output device. I'll select Rode NT-USB Mini, which is my microphone. I also want my computer sound to be recorded when I record my screen, so I'll also select I Show You Audio Capture. 
I'm also going to check my max built-in output. Now up here for master device, I'm going to actually from the list select my built-in output. And I'm going to make sure the sample rate is set again to 48 kilohertz to match all my other sound sources. All right, we're done here on the audio MIDI setup. So I'm just going to close out of this window here. And now I can set up my actual screen recording in screenshot. Now for a quick demonstration, I'm just going to use a video as a quick example. So I'm going to record my screen with this video on it, along with the sound from this video and the sound of my microphone, which will be my voiceover. So to record my screen, I'm going to bring up screenshot. But before I do that, I need to set a few things. First, I want to check that the input levels for my microphone and I show you audio capture are correct. So to do that, I'm just going to go up to the top menu here and under the Apple, select that and select system preferences. Then I'm going to go down to the sound area here. I'll select that. Then with the input button selected, I'm going to go down here and select my microphone, which is the Rode NT-USB Mini. Then I'll speak into my microphone at the level I'll use while recording, and I can then adjust the level using this slider here while I speak. Seems to be pretty good. Now you don't want to set it too high. You don't want your microphone sound to be sitting here. You don't want your level sitting in this last dot for too long or the sound will become distorted and not very pleasant for your audience. Next, I'm going to select I show you audio capture with the input button still selected. And you can see this is the input volume for I show you audio capture, which is basically the input volume of the computer sounds. So you can actually control the volume of the computer sounds using this slider. Now I prefer to leave this all the way up and control the level of the computer sounds at the source. So I'm just gonna leave this as is. So now that the input levels for my microphone and I show you audio capture are set, I'll just close out of system preferences here. Now the next step I'm gonna show you is vital. If you don't do this, this technique won't work. You need to switch the audio output of your Mac to that multi-output device we created earlier. It's pretty simple. Just go up to the top menu here, to the speaker icon, select it, and from the drop down list, select the multi output device. I also suggest that you use headphones for monitoring the sounds while you're recording your screen. All right, now I'm ready to record my screen. So I'll bring up screenshot by using the keyboard shortcut shift command five and up pops the screenshot interface and down here on the interface i'm going to make sure that record entire screen is selected because i want to record my entire screen i'll also go over to the options menu here select that and for save to i'm going to make sure that desktop is selected so that my final recording is saved to the desktop I'm going to leave the timer here set to five seconds. This is just a countdown, a five second countdown to the start of the recording. This is the important section, microphone. I want to make sure that aggregate device is selected as my microphone so that I can record my microphone and the computer sound. Now, if all you want to do is record the computer sound, you don't want any microphone sound, you can just select I show you audio capture here in the list, but I want my microphone and computer sound. So I'll just make sure that aggregate device is selected. So I'll select it there. All right, I'm finally ready to record. So to start recording, I can just click on the screen here. So I'll do that. And I get my five second countdown down here. And I'm recording. And I know I'm recording because of this little stop button icon on the top bar here. When it turns solid, I'm recording. Okay, so now that I'm recording, I'm going to play this video here. So we can record the sound. 
So I'll start playing it here. That's because USB interfaces and like the Scarlett Solo split the, the incoming the audio, audio signal. This video here. Typically, the XLR or microphone down input goes to channel 1, the left channel in a stereo pair. And the instrument input goes to channel 2. So there's the, right the sound channel. of the video. So your microphone signal sits on the left channel. Okay, I'm and just going to pause that player for a records it. And so I've paused the video, and I'm going to stop this recording by going up and selecting the stop button on the top menu here. And you can see I get this thumbnail. I'm just going to click it down here. And my recording opens up in the Quick Look interface. Now, if you want to know more about the Quick Look interface or how that little thumbnail of my recording appeared, you can watch my other tutorial on using Screenshot. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. So here in Quick Look, I can play back my screen recording. But before I do, I'm just going to go back up to the top menu to my speaker icon here at the top. I'm going to select it and switch my output back to the default output, which is headphones. That way I can control the output volume of my computer again. Here's the final screen recording with the microphone sound and the computer sound. And I know I'm recording because of this little stop button icon on the top bar here. When it turns solid, I'm recording. Okay, so now that I'm recording, I'm going to play this video here. So we can record the sound. So I'll start playing it here. That's because USB interfaces and like the Scarlett Solo split the, the incoming the audio, audio signal. This video here. Typically, the XLR or microphone down input bit. goes to channel 1, the left channel in a stereo pair. And the instrument input goes to channel 2. So there's the, right the sound channel. of the video. So your microphone signal sits on the left channel. Okay, I'm just going to pause that player for a records it. And so I've paused the video, and I'm going to stop this recording by going up and selecting the stop button on the top menu here. I'll admit it's an involved process when you first set it up, but once you've set it up and you've used it a couple of times, it becomes simpler. It's a great way to create short to medium length screen recordings. Now, I don't recommend you use this method to record video games or really long screen recordings, especially if you're recording the 5K resolution screen on your iMac. The file size of your recording will be huge and your machine may not be able to manage it. I still recommend using OBS for recording games. And if you plan on doing a lot of these types of informational or educational screen recordings, I recommend using dedicated software like ScreenFlow for the Mac or Camtasia for the Mac or PC. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.